I've never seen something like this. What? Uh, can do that with Shumit Folium. I thought I was a streaming expert, but apparently I'm not. Hello fans, my name is Faniel and today we are looking at some streaming apps. Let's head on Streamit's blog and we are going to have a look at the app of the month from January to April 2022 that should make four beautiful apps to study. And we are starting with Vincent's Warm Adarm app of the month. It's a GitHub Actions Explorer. We're keeping track of a few GitHub orgs below. You can see how they compare in terms of how long the actions ran. Perfect! A Streamit app with a big title and a hook. I love when we know exactly what the app is about. If you don't know, GitHub Actions is GitHub's CI/CD automation tools. It reacts to a set of events on your GitHub repository and runs the required script. And I guess some project will have longer GitHub Actions duration. This looks like an Altair chart, which is one of the more commonly used charting libraries for Streamlit. I myself am more of a Plotly user for interactive charts. One of the good things with Altair is it generally displays faster than Plotly. So I'm sad that this chart is not interactive. I think you need to add an interactive method at the end of the chart so I cannot zoom on the smaller repos and there's no tooltips. I think this is also something that you need to add to the chart but I don't mind. Maybe there, there'll be some later. Oh well. And you can drill down by selecting an organization on the sidebar. This is your standard sidebar with a multi-select. There you go, you've got a lot of GitHub actions that you can analyze. It has edited the entire chart and for example, the Pandas POSIX workflow took a lot of time to run. I'm wondering if it downloads the data every time I check on a new item or if it's a prepared data set. If you need to rerun a download every time your app is running, you should definitely put the results in cache with a time to leave of like 60 minutes or 60 seconds, go in and view the app source. And because this is a public Streamit app, this brings you immediately to the corresponding GitHub repository. It looks like a pandas with CSV. This CSV has last been updated 19 hours ago, and it's probably a small one, yeah, 2 mega, so there's no need to put it into cache. Don't put everything in cache, you can have every user read it every time he accesses the app. So I'm wondering how this data set is updated every day you could do a github action that update the data set every day or every week. Here, Vincent probably wanted to try another way of doing. We're not going to look into it. Uh, it's probably a virtual machine running somewhere in the cloud that is using the GitHub API to update the data set. Next app by Ahmed, we meet with Assembly AI. Assembly AI is a speech to text API that converts your video, audio, and live stream streams into text stream it with assembly AI. Yeah, let's check it out this oh this has no title i love titles i'm sorry but we've got a video i probably cannot play it copyright stuff what i like is you immediately arrive on an example. This is the only thing you can do. You cannot upload your own YouTube video. I'm sad, but you can select an example. And I would love to see more streaming apps with immediate examples that show you here's how the app works. So this app is two columns and on the left, you've got the JSON output from assembly AI, the model used, the URL, the text outputs. You've got a tokenization of all of the words. You've got all of the list of the words, it's supposed to be able to recognize the speaker. And on the right, you've probably got the formatted version of the JSON, the most significant segments of the video, and try to do a summary of it. This is a great demonstration of an API. I would have loved to be able to use my own YouTube videos. Uh, let's see in the code, in the source code. And yeah, you can see the discover some examples and you can see there's actually an upload your own YouTube video. I want this. So hey, what you can do because this is using st.secret, you can fork the app, deploy the app, 
on your own workspace and then add your assembly ai api key on your own application so that way i could use this app to subtitle my own videos but then i would need to pay for this api key so i'm not going to that for now next video march video by mitchell and roland brasco for analyzing structures of the air as protein family oh, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> uh, I learned so much just from reading your Streamit apps. So let's have a look. In the tab of the app, you can see there's an icon and a title. This is using the set page config with the argument page icon and page title. Wow. Powered by Streamit plus Pi 3D Mall. I think this is using a Streamit component that is called ST Mall. And this is beautiful. Oh, you can turn it. It's an it's interactive. <laughs> uh, okay, back to back back here. This is a beautiful structure. You've got a logo on the left and the title and the description of the app on the right with the name of the authors. Something I also notice is the theme of the page. This is using the Streamit theme functionality. You can add your own thing by adding a config.toml file inside a .streamit folder. And don't worry if you don't like the theme, you can always go back into settings and then go and put your own light or dark theme. We've got a whole page just for describing the app. I actually also like those kind of app where this looks like a multi-page app. You can see in the sidebar, it's got a select box with a list of all of the page, each page going into its own stream its script. So this is not using the native multi-page app, but I think this is, this is flexible enough. Whoa, multi-app. And there's button, stream it button. So this is probably not a stream it button because this redirects to a new tab. This is markdown, you can see. I'm using the inspector to check the HTML element. You can see the HTML attribute it's using. Here it's markdown. So this is markdown that is displaying an HTML button with Streamlit CSS style. Oh, there's a Twitter button. So this is an HTML button in a markdown that you can click to go and follow this guy on Twitter. Hey Mitch, let's check on the pages and bam bam. There's the left column with a long description and on the right column you've got markdown with again using unsafe allow html to encode this text into a span and then color the span to give it this color here's an st form if you're interested no this is an expander sorry <laughs> Open the expander. It's like a smaller Streamit app inside your Streamit script. If you don't want to put this application in its own Streamit script, but you don't want those free apps visible immediately to your user, you can hide them into expanders. Uh, let's have a look at the source code quickly. We want to see the, the Twitter buttons and stuff. Whoa, multi-app. I think I saw on the forum this. If I find it, I'll put it in the description and we wanted to see the home page so let's go to utils home page rascor at util 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 blah 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 kind of something i was just thinking about in the menu there's a way of using set config page to add a link for the reporter bug get help you can link this to your github repo or your email addresses so then when a user goes on the menu and clicks report the bug it goes immediately to the GitHub repository. Anyway, oh, you can see. So this is the markdown with the Twitter URL. It's using the image shields uh, your website to display the image. There, there it is, sidebar, create Streamit button. So yeah, you can see they've replicated the Streamit CSS on the button. And that's a nice, that's a really nice app. Let's go to the April app by Samuel Bancroft. Did you see this? This is an awesome hook. This brings you immediately to this part of the app and then afterwards you go to the right column to read the description of the app. So again, there's a title, there's a logo, there's the description of the app immediately. That's already great app. What I can see here is this uh, is a multi-page that is probably using Streamit Book by Sebastian Flores. Streamit Book is being used to display multiple pages as slide, and it also has a lot of multiple smaller components. Next page. Wow. 
So wait, 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 before going there. This animation, uh, this is this, this, what is this animation? This looks like to meet Lottie. I'm not sure, but because what you can do with Lottie is you can use After Effects to create an animation with a lot of image. Then from this animation, you build a Lottie file as JSON and use this JSON with Streamlit Lottie to display the animation. I can see there's no menu. You can use a CSS hack to hide the menu. Next page. And wow, loading timeline. So this is also a stream. I think this is a streamlit component. I think it's timeline JS. Let me check. Yeah, so this is timeline JS. I can guarantee you, I'm going to spend a lot of time on. Oh wow, wow. Okay, next page. So okay, this is the streamlit folium component. You can display a map. So I think now with a recent release of streamlit folium, you can actually draw shapes on the map and get back the shape. On the Python side, there's a streamit form here. So what streamit form does, you know how if I edit something in this select box, like I go to Dubai, for example, it immediately reruns the app from top to bottom. If you don't want to rerun the whole app because it will take too much time, you can use a streamit form. Here, for example, I want to use the quarter instead of the year. It's not going to rerun immediately. I can still select a swear to what I don't know and give it another name. And then when I'm done with it, oh, Oh, I can expand the custom time lapse, put 12 frames per second. And then when I'm done with this, I can submit this form. This is going to build a time lapse, so it's going to take a lot of time, which is why I think Samuel is putting this in a form. And now I'm rerunning with the time lapse, it's computing. Let's see what happens. One eternity later. Yeah, it's taking a bit too much time for me. I'm stopping this. Next page. Let's go to Oceans. Okay, some streamit folium. What uh, you can do that with streamit folium? Apparently, you can do a comparison with streamit folium. Can you do that in streamit folium? You can have a slider like this. You need to tell me in the comments. Night Lab also has the juxtapose component that you can use and see you can also use a slider like this but here you've got streamit folium or just a basic folium and maybe a juxtapose over we can we don't know it's not open source um <gasps> samuel you need to tell us how you did this dark magic this is probably altair fun fact you can also do interactive matplotlib so instead of using altair or plotly to have, you know, this zoomable, panable graph, you can use matplotlib and streamit will deal with the interactivity stuff. Oh, wow. Now you can see this horizontal nav bar. Is it also streamit book? No way. Can you do that with streamit book? Streamit book is using a component here. This is also a streamit component. It's called I think Streamit Option Menu. I think this is also from Streamit Option Menu. And finally, I'll start Chris with a leaderboard. Uh, this is probably a leaderboard. I don't know if he's using a remote database to save the scores, but because this is a Streamit Cloud, if you're putting this leaderboard as file in the container, you risk running this application on multiple pods or containers if you prefer. So if you're saving a file with the leaderboard on the container, there's a risk that other users go to other containers and don't see the same leaderboard. So I guess this is using a remote leaderboard. You can use a database like a Firestore or Data. Okay, and this is start quiz. Uh, so there's uh, multiple buttons and the ST metric that is used to display your score. How much points did you get? And it's disabling the quiz. This is also a streamit book feature. I'm going to end the quiz. And yeah, and there you are. Congratulations, streamit community. Go watch this next video if you want to learn more tips around streamlit. See you in the next one. Bye for now.